I mentioned in a previous video that I think the absolute best results sonically for cleaning records comes from the service Perfect Vinyl Forever. Well, we're gonna get to test that once and for all in the next two videos. This is a full review of the services of perfectvinylforever.com, part one. extremely excited about these next two videos. This is a part one of two, so please check back or even subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified as soon as part two drops. But in a previous video about record cleaning, I talked about different levels that you can find yourself in as you get along this mad journey of collecting pieces of vinyl. You can watch that video right here if you haven't seen it yet. In my opinion, there's a peak to the sonic performance versus cash investment that some of these more expensive machines offer and cleaning records is an ever-changing and evolving landscape and there are proper ways to handle the vinyl and those ways change with new products and new information. So that's why I think that sending your records to a record cleaning service is the best possible way to get your vinyl clean. One, because it doesn't cost nearly as much as buying a KL audio cleaner and something like that probably doesn't even make sense for a beginner or even novice collector like myself at 6,000 plus dollars. So the money invested into at least trying it out is not nearly nearly as costly as pieing a machine. And number two, probably should be the first reason, you're going to get the best sonic results for a number of reasons. This is a service that specializes in doing this. If there's a new type of tech or process out there, they've either probably used it or they tried it or experimented and either implemented into their procedure or they move on from it. Do you really feel like researching all the properties of PVC vinyl and how they interact with iso alcohol versus Turgiclene? I mean, don't get me wrong, I have and I've recommended finding some type of home cleaning process and I really think you should do that. And that does involve some research and I've done a little bit of that research, but at the end of the day, I really just wanna to listen to my records and enjoy the music. I do want the best sound and I don't wanna spend a ton of money or time. And I said this in the last video, but we all know that this is true. When someone else makes your sandwich or cleans your car for you or your house, it always feels better or it always seems better when they do it, at least most of the time anyway. So to be sure if this service is really what it says it is, Steve from perfectvinylforever.com actually reached out to me and offered graciously to have me send 16 records in for a trial run to really put his service to the test for these claims. So I'm being upfront about this, PVF did send me this stuff on a comp to make this review. That said, they are not influencing my decisions or my conclusions here. These will be my honest results. I'm gonna give you the truth here, I always try to. They have not paid me and this is not a sponsored video in any way. Think of it more like Steve and Perfect Vinyl Forever are putting their product out there so that you can see for yourself what the results are. So as I said, this video is a two-parter because you need to send your records out to Perfect Vinyl forever to be cleaned and there's a lot that goes into this so I thought it would be good to do an unboxing reboxing of the vinyl and then send it off and then part two will be getting it back and going through the results and all the records that I chose to send out to him and why. As a bonus Steve did send me some sample records that he uses for these demos. These are identical pressings that have been cleaned in two different ways. One was cleaned five times through with a vacuum record cleaner and the other one was cleaned with PFV's archival 3.0 process. So I'm really excited to even just test those out and just see what they sound like. And we're gonna get into those here in this video and talk about what pressings they were because I was actually very shocked at what we were sent here and they sound amazing. So first off, this is the website where you would make an order. And in this review, we're gonna talk about the A16 3.0 cleaning. It says 3.0 on the site, but I think he's actually up to 3.1 on the process now. I've heard him talk about that in other videos. Again, he's always refining the process. So we are sending out 16 records to be clean. Now they also offer a flattening service and I'm exploring that as well. This is an add-on fee of $12 and you specify which records that you wanna be flattened and you have those records cleaned in their service before you flatten. Now, you have to have your records cleaned in their service before you flatten them. You can't just send your records to get flattened. 
I'm actually very interested in the flattening process here because I've sent him three records that are very important to me that I would like to get flattened, but I have a whole video that I'm gonna be making about flattening records and a home process that you have. So again, another reason to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss that when it comes out. But there has definitely been a rash of warped records out there lately, and it's definitely a problem in the industry. And we all, as people in the vinyl community, if you have a channel or if you're talking about vinyl records, you definitely need to be talking about this so that we can try to hold these record makers more accountable for the quality control to make sure that we're not getting all these warped copies all the time because it can really be a problem. Now, after purchasing, you are sent a record mailer that comes really fast. This was media mail from Wisconsin to Pennsylvania, and it arrived in like less than two days. Granted, Holidays will probably affect that, so just keep that in mind. But let's open this box and see what other extra protection he gives you in this. This is actually something that I'm really the most concerned about because I'm gonna be sending off some pretty expensive records here, so we'll get into those later, but I'm very concerned about my vinyl being sent out in this box and being sent back like this, so I wanna make sure that this packaging is really nice. So we're gonna do a little unboxing here and go over it and see what we get. Here is the mailer that you get and we're going to open this up, cutting it open here. The first thing that we see in the mailer is the additional record mailer that he sent with the demo records. So I'm very excited to open up these and we'll go over these in a little bit here. Next, we have a small piece of cardboard followed with the reseal tape that we use to reseal the package. Here's our work order. Thanks, Steve, for the promo, along with showing that we're getting some records flattened and the shipping insurance. It's very important you should get in shipping insurance if you're gonna send off some of these expensive records. Here is the foam. The foam is very thick and we're given these disc keeper sleeves made by Disc City. These sleeves are extremely premium. If you have the chance to use these as your normal sleeves for all your records, congratulations to you, because I'm sure they're probably pretty expensive, but we have 16 of them here. And then we also have the foam that's gonna separate all of these. These foam inserts here will protect each of the records during the shipping. Now we're gonna open the demo mailer. These are all the demo records, and we're gonna go over these in a little bit here, so I'm just showing them real quick so you can see what we get out of the package. This foam here is pretty thick. It's gonna protect it from all four sides within this box. So if the box gets dinged in shipping, should be okay. And here's the reboxing of the records that I'm gonna send out. I'm sending out a Jimi Hendrix UHQR, going in these awesome disc keeper sleeves. I feel pretty protected with these. And then each one gets the foam insert followed by it. And then we just repeat this for all 16 records. Now make sure that you're subscribed and notified to the channel so that you can see the results in episode two as we get them back from Perfect Vinyl for Forever. Got all my records packed up here in the mailer. I'm sending this back along with his demo records in one single box. He's given us uh, some tape to be able to reseal the box with that I'll do. They'll send you this mailer with a prepaid label so you don't have to pay the shipping back to them. You will have to pay for this mailer the first time. And then I think after you use the service the first time, you'll have these materials when you get this stuff back. So if you wanna go for a reload, they have a cheaper option. I think it's called a reload on the website for the cheaper option that you can go to there and use that for your next batch of records that you would wanna send off to them. Now here are the demo records and I listened to those and to do all this testing, I'm using a pretty normal man stereo. I think it's audiophile quality in my opinion. It's not a $15,000 or $50,000 system, but you probably don't have that either. So my guess is a lot of people out there are probably like me and have a pretty nice collection and an okay stereo. So this is for you. Will you hear the difference in these cleaning methods? My turntable is a Fluence RT85 with the Ortofon 2M Blue cartridge and a Zen Phono stage. I also use my Zen Signature headphone amp with the Sennheiser HD XX headphones to eliminate the speaker and Duke audio amp at times just to be sure that what I was hearing is reference level. So if you wanna make sure that what my process is, that's my process. What I love about this is that Steve actually offered to send these out to me. I didn't know that he even does this or has these demo records. So it's very, very cool that he does this. And I was very shocked at a lot of the results that I heard here. First of all, the vacuum cleaned records sounded amazing. So vacuum cleaning is still a really, really good way to clean your records. And it's something that I've been questioning, like is vacuum cleaning good enough? Should I only do ultrasonic cleaning? And after hearing this, you know, going from a super ultrasonic cleaned record to a vacuum cleaned record, you know, vacuum cleaning will definitely get you by if you have 
a, a home system and that's what you're using, which is what I've been using. So it kind of takes the load off there. These are very cool in the way that he has marked these out. What we've got here is one record is the control copy and the other record is the perfect vinyl forever uh, copy. Another great thing that he did was he asked me what kind of music that I like, which is very cool. I got to say, I'm probably going to buy all of these demo records that he sent just because that's how I am with vinyl, especially after I hear something that I like. I definitely want to buy it. Maybe if you know of any of these records, definitely let me know in the comments below if you've heard any of these or if you like them. Some of these were 45s, so I only have one of the two 45s, so I'd like to hear the rest of it, which is why I'll probably end up buying it. This one here is from Isao Suzuki. Suzuki. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I always have to put that out there with my pronunciations, but it's Blow Up by Impex Records. This is a 45 RPM limited edition. Uh, it's listed here, Impex Records. And I gotta say, man, the production quality on this record is absolutely amazing. It's, it's almost like a sound effects record. It's, it's very moody. It's, it's almost like just like a soundtrack record. Three Blind Mice is what's listed here. I'm not sure if that's the label. I don't know what that is. I don't really know if that's like a sub label or something like that. I didn't do a lot of research on this, but I just blindly listened to this to hear the audio quality out of it. And as he says here, track one, the sound effects track, track two with, I mean, like, so it, this has like amazing cymbal swells, amazing clapping percussion. There's a lot of, um, auxiliary percussion parts here, a lot of strings and things like that, a lot of piercing sounds that are going to give you a lot of good high end. And then it has a bowed bass in the beginning and, and the bass is just amazing. And then it is just really, really good. So the bass on this was extremely clear. And again, this is a 45 RPM version here. Not all these records were 45 RPM, but this one was. I listened to the control copy first, obviously. And it sounded great. I mean, it sounded really good. I was taken back with the clarity of this vinyl of the 45 and the cleaned vacuum sealed record. Then we got to the perfect vinyl forever archival 3.0 copy. I gotta tell you, I'm not BSing here. This isn't a plug for his service in any way. There is a noticeable, noticeable difference from the ultrasonic cleaning method here versus those previous vacuum cleaned records. And I know you're probably gonna say, well, you don't even know what kind of vacuum cleaning he did. Maybe he never even vacuum cleaned those records. That may very well be the case. This vinyl 3.0 service, the archival service that he did, it is very good. It, I could, I almost felt like I could hear like the actual vinyl itself. I know that sounds crazy, but there was definitely a difference in the clarity, definitely a difference in the symbol reverb, in, in the symbol decay, in the, in the reverb in general, not symbol reverb, but the reverb in general and the decay of the symbols in the symbol swells in this particular record. And, and it was noticeable. It was definitely noticeable in this record for sure. The next record that I listened to right out of the bat, I was very excited for because it's actually one that I'm sending out to him to go get clean. So this is a very good one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one service here. So this one here will actually kind of give us a little bit of a, of a clarity on whether or not he vacuum cleaned really good his copy of the UHQR Miles Davis versus um, the Sonic Clean one. This record is the Miles Davis UHQR 33 and a third kind of blue. And I already love this record. You've already heard me talk about the 45 edition in a previous video. Go check that out if you haven't heard it. The 33 and a third, I have a copy that is very noisy and I got it secondhand so I wasn't able to send it back to Analog Productions to get it, you know, replaced. I probably would have gotten it replaced because I don't think the UHQR should sound that noisy if you're getting them that way. So I did get it brand new, but I got it third hand from a different company and I wasn't able to send it back. So I wanted to get mine cleaned and they actually sent out one as a demo. So I'm excited about this because I have mine, which was cleaned with my record cleaning process. And then we have this one, which was cleaned with the five times record cleaning vacuum that he did versus this one, which is the uh, perfect vinyl forever version. So I was very excited to see what the results of these would be. And I gotta say, 
This one here is really the biggest one out of all of these where I really, really, really noticed a difference. Maybe it's because I'm the most familiar with this material than all these other records. So there's four other records here. I wasn't very familiar with the other three at all. This one I've heard a million times. Plus I own two different copies and I've painstakingly listened to them. Listening to the vacuum cleaning of this one, I could definitely, I actually had to immediately pull out my 33 and a third and my 45 because I was hearing what almost sounded like a degradation on the cymbal clarity. It almost sounded like distortion. In fact, I was worried that my cartridge wasn't aligned correctly and I started getting freaked out about that. But I started hearing this distortion it wasn't coming through so much with the horns. It was coming through only with the cymbal clarity, only with the cymbals and the ride cymbal. Now, when I played the archival cleaning version, it was 100% gone. And I've read reviews about this, this UHQR, about people saying that, you know, this, this sounds really great, but you can really tell that the tape has been worn out. And I've never been able to like speak to that before, that the tape has been worn out. I don't know that I'd be able to really hear the tape has been worn out on something. The clarity that came out of this archival cleaning cleaned up that distortion. It completely cleaned it up. I mean, it, it sounded like night and day. And then I immediately pulled out my 45 edition and could hear a little bit of that in there. So now I'm like wondering if I should send out the 45 edition. I'm not sending it out in this run, but I probably am gonna send it out in the next run when I get my 33 and a third back and I hear it and you know hear it from, hear it from a freshly cleaned copy. But I was able to hear the symbol definition on this without distortion, with, I mean, it, it was, it was night and day, like night and day. This was a completely new recording to me as this UHQR. I didn't think they could sound better and this sounded better. So I gotta give it up. Maybe it is just ultrasonic cleaning. I've never ultrasonic cleaned my records, but their process that they've got going here, man, I, again, I almost feel like I can feel the stylus groove, like like grinding against the grooves of the records. I'm sure it's all psychological based on the descriptions that he's talked about before. I've seen Steve talk in previous videos about when records are new, even these UHQR records, they can get these, they can get basically like a coating of plastic from the manufacturer that can end up into the micro grooves here. And I've seen people talk about in some of the comments of my videos about, you know, a brush getting into these micro grooves or even liquids getting into these micro grooves. The liquids can help break things down to get into these grooves. But listening to Steve talk about this, we're talking about a micron level here, micron grooves here. And he put it out there that a, a human hair is 30 microns or 20 microns. And the bottom part of a groove of a record, the bottom V of a groove of a record is only one micron. So that's how like much we're talking about here about like, I could almost see that these microscopic particles in the manufacturer's building can fall and get into the grooves of these records in the time of pressing. We never get a chance to actually get that stuff out of there. Maybe you do as soon as you get your record and you ultrasonically clean it, that is exactly what you should do. But man, I could hear a difference night and day between the five time vacuum cleaned record versus the PVF archival 3.0 process on this UHQR, not even a question. This next one here is definitely also something that I'm gonna buy. It is Ricky Lee Jones, It's Like This from Analog Productions, 45 RPM. I've never heard of this artist, I've never heard this record, and it's fantastic. Side two starts out with a cover of For No One from the Beatles. My wife actually stopped to listen to it. She was taken back by it, very impressed by it. And again, the sound quality on these records was fantastic. And I'm not putting down the vacuum cleaning on any of these records either. That's what I, that was one thing that was really great about all all this was like, I'm putting on the vacuum cleaned record and it sounds great. And then I put on this archival record and it sounds even better. These records, as they're being cleaned from this, this archival process, I'm getting better vocal clarity. I'm getting better cymbal clarity. I'm getting better bass. The bass is definitely more pronounced in these ultrasonically cleaned records versus the vacuum cleaned ones. Again, it could just be vacuum cleaning, but this guy's process 
is extremely thorough. He's got a three step process of rinsing the records before they even go into the ultrasonic cleaning. So I'm gonna possibly try to get him into the next video when I get my results back so I can talk with him about some of the results that I have. But I'm really excited here. Just so you know too, he's not seeing this video before I send it out to the world. You're seeing this video probably before he will. I'm trying to be as neutral on this stuff as possible. If I wasn't hearing differences on these things, if it was all smoke and mirrors, I would definitely tell you. I'm the first person to do that because I do not like any of this nonsense of like all of a sudden I thought this was the greatest record for 20 20 years and then I find out it was cut digitally and now it's no longer the greatest cut record. What's that all about? All that clarification that I just went over here and the last one, Joan Armatrading, I think is how it's pronounced, Armatrading, looks like A&M Records. And again, I think this is one I'm probably gonna go get. I, I really enjoyed this record. I thought it was really good. And again, the production quality of all four of these records is just amazing. I already knew the production quality on the Miles Davis was great, but the production quality on these other three has just been stellar. The Impex Records, Analog Productions, and now this A&M Records, all very good. So these are very good reference copies. Now. This one was one that I actually did not hear that much of a difference between the archival cleaning versus the five time record cleaning. And again, I don't know how much he sends these out. I don't know if these were cleaned right before he sent them to me and he cleans them as soon as he gets them back or if he sends them out to other people and they do their demo checks too. But I can say, both of these records sounded amazing. Both copies sounded amazing. So I'm putting it out there to say that this one was one that I didn't have that like noticeable moment. Now granted, maybe that was the production quality of the record. Maybe it's the pressing itself. You know, it's always so hard to tell between vinyl records when you're trying to do this. One thing I really wish that I did have for my setup, and I'm gonna try to look into this as the channel goes on here in the future, just for you guys' sake and also for my sake, I wanna get like a dual setup. I'll probably have it set up here right behind me, a dual setup turntable that I, like a DJ setup, maybe a Techniques or something that I can like switch back and forth to to really get an A, B on. I feel like that's the only real accurate way because even when you take the time to take a record off of your turntable and put a new record Record onto the turntable, you're not hearing the exact A, B at the same time there. I feel like the only other thing to do would be to record it digitally, but then that's kind of like adding in other variables into the equation that I don't want to deal with. So we're going to look into that in the future. Stay tuned for that. Anyway, this record here, very good record, but also one that did not speak to me as well as the others. The symbol clarity on that Isao Suzuki was just unreal and the vocal quality on the Ricky Lee Jones again great they also are 45 rpm records versus this one not being and the only other one that wasn't a 45 rpm was the Miles Davis UHQR so again maybe the pressing has something to do with all this I'm sure it does there's so many variables what are we going to do here at the end of the day so those are all the demo records what am I sending out to be cleaned? Well, I want you to watch the next video to find out that full list, but there is one record that was the catalyst for me even exploring a new record cleaning option other than my trusty vinyl vac setup, which I do recommend to people. I just got the Dark Side of the Moon 30th Anniversary Edition, all analog pressing cut by Kevin Gray. And honestly, this is an amazing listen compared to my 2016 reissue or even my 1973 American Winchester pressing that also has a giant scratch on it. But I've cleaned this four times with a vacuum cleaner and light TurgiClean solution, and I'm still getting some pops in the beginning of the record where it's like extremely soft coming in. Maybe it's a defect on the vinyl. I've read though that after a lot of ultrasonic cleaning, people have had good results, but I don't own an ultrasonic cleaner and I'm not ready to spend $500 on the Humming Guru just yet. I wanna see if this service can get this record clean. And I have high hopes. Maybe it will be dashed, but let's see. Some others here that I'm gonna preview. 
are this Black Sabbath Vinyl Me Please 2015 edition, which is actually the Rhino Records edition, also cut by Kevin Gray, that is amazing. I'm sending this one off also because it is warped and I'm hoping to get it flattened by them. So this is one of the ones that's getting flattened in the flattening service. This is very, very exciting to me. A, I'm excited to see the results of my cleaned records, but also it's exciting that I get to even do a review with a company that has reached out to me or that I can start to build a relationship with and a lot of that is because of you guys and people watching and supporting this channel I really can't thank enough the people that do watch that do make comments that do like and subscribe please keep watching please keep doing it know that I feel a very good obligation to you to keep wanting to make these videos and to try to think out of the box and come up with cool ideas and stuff so you're the ones that are really progressing this and getting companies like Perfect Vinyl Forever to reach out to me to do these types of reviews so it's very exciting for me to do that and I'm very grateful to even get the opportunity to do it and I hope that I do a good job for you guys. Definitely, like I said, please subscribe so you don't miss the next episode where I get these pieces of vinyl back from Perfect Vinyl Forever and see the results and go over all of the cleaned vinyl and listen to it in all of its great, amazing glory. Okay, I've said enough. I gotta get to the post office to mail off these records. I will see you guys on the next one.